Here's a quick overview of Ghost Controls Automatic Ape Opener System. We've got our battery box. All the systems are battery operated. There's two bays, so you can put a second battery in if you think you might need it. Here in Arizona, we don't. One battery ought to be enough. It's fused. You can see the auxiliary fuse, right? Let me see if I can do this without breaking anything. It's fused and they come with this extra pigtail. So you see how that would go for the second battery right here. So it's already pre-wired for a second battery. So here's our battery box, right? And I need to do cable management, but oh, and the boxes are nice. They're just solid plastic. They're gonna be pretty much water resistant. You could lock them here with the the bottom tab then I got the wire I just made it as small as I could up into the control box here is the control box you can see this is the solar so here's the solar panel and I got the wire we got to tighten all this up but got the wire comes in here and I put it through this hole this is the little plastic plug you have to remove out of the negative side of the solar panel but it's nicely labeled see how it says solar positive negative and then here's the control box wiring or here's the battery so from the battery into uh, the unit and it comes across here and it plugs in it's super easy install right they just plugged in together and then this is from the arm this is the cable that they recommend using a conduit I'll probably put that in soon I just wanted to get this running and then you can see it's super easy to wire up. Everything is labeled. Can you see that? Oh, it says red, black, green, and white. I mean, talk about simple. Now notice here, the second operator. So it's the same PCB for a two operator unit for a dual gate, but um, you can't just buy the single gate and then eventually upgrade it because you won't have the, the, um, the terminals in place for the second operator. And you also won't have the second um, extended limit settings. So this is jog opening and jog close if you need to just fine-tune um, the setting you won't have that for the second set. You can see the buttons aren't even there so this is not a upgrade later thing. This is by the one you need. There's the the dial for the force setting and then I have my beep off which is the uh, the warning. It says warning here on or off open direction I'm using it to push to open so my dip switch number one is over my dip switch number two is to the left to have the warning off and then I have the the force mode for my safety mode instead of a monitored photo eye and then um, I don't know what that is okay so and you can learn the auto times this is cool inside the battery door they have posted some instructions so let's slide that back over now this is what I couldn't find online how do we use it on a block wall where the gate is on the same plane as the operator arm so I had the longer brackets that were for push to open situations but I don't need them because I'm on the same plane instead of being mounted around back or around the side I'm on there so I use the standard brackets even though I'm in the push to open configuration and so here is the fancy remote the basic remote is the same except for it doesn't have the three bottom buttons so here we go let's open it Perfect. And again, I fine tune that. I wanted to open right to the edge of the concrete slab. And I fine tuned it with the jog open buttons. And then again, I'm going to push my button. You can see it's pretty fast. And here's one note. When I installed it, 
this panel was ended right about here instead of here. So when I installed this bracket, this when this shipped, the operator arm, this seam was not visible. It had come all the way back. And so you see if I manually you know kind of push it back a little bit, it's a little bit better. It's not square. So I would recommend in your installation, it has you mount this first, you know, the bracket, then the arms, and then you mount the operator, and then you rough it into place with this clevis, you know, the, with the pin in place, and then mark those holes right here. Here's what I would do differently. You can mount that first, but then go ahead and, and mount your control box and your battery box. Just get those up on the wall so that you can operate it. And then before you make these holes on your gate, run it once or twice. And so you, you, know, you know, stay out of the way, but you'll just pull it out of the way. You'll let it run straight out and straight back. And then, um, and then you'll know its actual resting position. Because as it is now, um, I can't get my gate flat closed it will be like this and I don't know if you can see it you see that V if you're a little bit OCD like me that's gonna bug you to death so anyways just a tip run that first so get your your bracket installed put up your control board wire in your battery add your solar no reason not to add the solar it's fantastic and then run your operator a couple times to get it in and out and then once you've run it and you can see where it's going to live normally every time it closes then set your holes so and they're this going to be so close i wouldn't be able to re-drill them you know i'd have to elongate them and then close it up so that's the ghost control system i love it i really do it, it really is super cool it works great <laughs>